Greetings to the 30 tribes of Israel scattered in the four corners of the earth and to the Gentiles called by the oxen fairing name of Abba Yahuwah Aloahim. This is the oxen fairing name that is above every other single name you ever known. Eternal, not pork of Jesus, not snake Allah. Is Yahuwah. Thank you, Abba. Not pork Jesus. Nina snake Allah. But it's Yahuwah. The only everlasting name that is above every other name. And that is above every other name. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. It's Yahuwah, the only fiery name that is above every other name, princess. Truly love Yahuwah. It's okay. So much love Yahuwah. This temple is eternal bond with Yahuwah. This is the only living name. The only eternal name that is above. Every other names, every other names, yes, horrible seeker, yeah, but every other names, not pork Jesus, and neither snake Allah, but it's Yahuwah, the only saving name, and that is above every other names, every other names, yes. Every other names forever. It's all no, yes, from everlasting to everlasting. Is the only eternal living name. Mm, and that is above every other name. Hallelujah. Horrible Sikaya. Hallelujah. Orobo sikaya ba, orobo sikaya ba Yahuwa, sikaya ba Yahushua, sikaya ba Ruach Hakodesh, sikaya ba, orobo sikaya ba Lover of my soul, orobo sikaya ba. Sika yaba, haribo sika yaba, I love you so much, Abba. Thank you. This is the eternal worship, the eternal song, right at the feet of Abba Yahuwah. I love you so much, Abba. Yes, family, Shabbat Shalom, much love and much prosperity attend the family for you. are ah, the only reason of our time like truth, because... The time is simply near. Just as you see, the days goes by, so draw nigh the coming of Yehoshua HaMashiach. Just as the Malak of Yehua saith unto Yehukana, the revelator, seal not the prophecies of this book, for the time is simply near. Exactly what we are doing here, family, the Cody and Times prophecy signs, dreams in, preparing people like you, body like you, house like you, for the blessed returning of King Yehoshua HaMashiach, our eternal bridegroom, to whom do eternally all worship, praise, honor, rich his power, glory, wealth, to the glory of his magnificent Abba Yahuwah, the Almighty, eternal. Like I said before, it's not pork or Jesus, neither snake Allah. The given name is Yahuwah. And to the Ruach HaKodesh, horrible sika yaba. To the Ruach HaKodesh, horrible sika yaba. To the Ruach HaKodesh, eternally. Our glory goes to the Ruach HaKodesh forevermore. Our praise worship goes to the Ruach HaKodesh eternally. Horrible sick, Kayaba, on glory worship right at his feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba. Love you so much. Thank you for giving your set up spirits unto the camp of Israel. Thank you so much for giving your eternal word. King Yahushua. 
to the camp of Israel. Yes, Abba Yahuwah, you have been worshipped, praised, loved, honored, served, always, ever, eternal, right in the temple of your eternal hand, made your very Isha, for you are my Abba, also my eternal husband. I just love you, my Abba. I love you so much. Hallelujah. Reba Baba Sikaya, but just love you. Thank you, Abba. Yes, family, we want to do it again right in his presence. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm being, you know, born for, create, created for, to talk about the things that pertain unto Yahuwah, the eternal creator. All right now, because I also have just very short time to throw in some light in this very a passage that is turning confusion or turning the whole world or the whole body of Messiah some into some kind of confusion. But I want to address just one part that is so so crucial at this point in time in our lives. This is the truth we indeed needed. Truth is power, it's the pure energy, is the eternal source, you know, of freedom. Truth is the breath of eternity, the breath of living. The source of life, truth. Ye shall know the truth, and only the truth shall set you free. To be set free from any bondage of any kind, just dive in into the truth. Just look into the truth. And how are you going to be getting that? Through the mindset of Yahushua HaMashiach. Through the mindset of King Yahushua HaMashiach. Whereby he said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. And no one comes to heaven but by me, the truth. Are we ready to dig into the truth? Of Abba Yehua, which is Yahushua Hamishiach. And uh, you know, this passage said, Uzza chapter 4, uh, verse 6, it said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Okay? It did not say, just notice this part. It didn't say the people of the devil, but my own people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So, what is going to be destroying people? What is going to be sending people into the camp of the enemy for neglecting to know the truth? For neglecting to be knowledgeable about the truth, the things you should have been, you know, knowledge you, you should have been digging into, and you rationalize that again. That comes in Christianity. That is why I hate so much that organization and their Messiah, Paul called Jesus. That is why I don't have anything at all to do with that set, you know, group of people. They will rationalize the whole matter, the cause of Noah upon his grandson through his son it is generational cause but christian will not come and say the apocalypse jesus destroy all that you shouldn't be looking into it or you shouldn't be looking into it okay jesus destroyed the lord jesus destroyed their head jesus destroyed their eternal life in order for you in order for, to dissuade you not know, to look into what was before you because and the reason why this is so crucial, Yahushua said his coming is also like the, the days of Noah. That is Luke chapter 17, verses 26 through 30. He said his second coming, his, sec his, his second returning back, is going to be just as the days of Noah and just as the days of Lot. Okay, so what time are we now? We are simply in the days of Noah. And also in the days of Lot. So what took place in the days of Noah? And that is the things we about to, we, we are going to look into now. The very one Jesus Christ from the pit of hell, the, not, the very knowledge is, is, is told from you. He steal this very knowledge from you. He don't want you to know. Remember, the devil come and not. John 10, 10, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. A thing you should have been knowledgeable about he will just take it from your side and it will help you to make light of it. Now, having said this, let us put it in uh, the title because there are some things we should have been looking into. But because Paul, Jesus Christ don't want you to know his hiding place, therefore he will not say that he has already destroyed his head. And Matthew 5 Verses 17 through 20, Yahushua said, you shouldn't think of, of that at all, that I've come to destroy the law, no the prophet. Noah is the first prophet after all, is being after, you know, the regeneration uh, to repopulate the entire earth. Noah was the first prophet. 
whatever releases from his mouth, it is settled. That consummated it because he's a prophet. Why? Abiyawa said, he found Noah righteous. So whatever a righteous man declares definitely stands forever. And this is going to blow you off. And this is also happening among the Christendom that said, Poor could Jesus destroy their head, not our book. Because Matthew 5, verses 17 through 20, make it so clear. Yahushua said, You shouldn't even think of, of such that I've come to destroy the law, nor the prophets, but rather to do what to fulfill until when? Until the heaven and the earth is no more. Revelation 21 said, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth are no more. So what is the heaven and the earth doing? They are buried testimony or witness for the royal law. That whosoever that breaks it, they keep record. Whosoever that keep it, they also uh, keep record. When you also go to Deuteronomy 30 or 31 verses 19, Moshe said, or Moses, another wonderful prophet, he said, I've caught heaven and the earth today to bear witness that I've given you the law. They're going to be bearing witness. If you keep it, it will be blessed. If you don't keep it, it will be cursed. And Christians will just, you know, come with their madness and say that Jesus destroyed that. We shouldn't look into this wonderful guidance that is going to be shaping you and molding you into what you ought to be in his presence. They will deviate you and dissuade you from that. To be looking into a microwave system. To be looking into the mark of the beast system. To be going after Babylonia and Pagan, Paganism system. Let me tell you, a curse of Cana is not only on Cana, it's spread, it's spread throughout the, uh, the, 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 the Africa continent, the land, and the people. Now, Kosh, from West Com Nimrod, Kosh is the son of, uh, 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 father of Nimrod, and Ham is the father of, of, of Kosh. Now, from Nimrod, the entire world get polluted. The whole part of Nimrod, or yes, Nimrod, it is Babylon. And from where come all paganism, some worship, Christmas, all this nonsense you observed, is a curse on you. That is how it goes to Revelation 17, verses 5. He said, Mystery Babylon. And now, what makes it a mystery? Nimrod, from Nimrod, every single store and wood worship you that it exists today, it came from Nimrod. Now, in the days of Nimrod, Shana, Easter came from there. All this says perversion came from there. Now, from Nimrod, every idol worship came to be. When you also read Zechariah, uh, Zach, uh, Zechariah chapter 5, he said this is their resemblance throughout the entire world. Now, he said they're going to build this theory, which is a wizard, the satanic trinity, satanic trinity of Christendom. He said they built it a house in the land of China. Where is China? It is simply the land of Babylon, which is for the son or the, great, the, the grandson of Noah. No, rather the grandson of her. From where call comes the curse upon all black people. Whether you are choosing or not. So it, it's applic it applies to everyone. Blacks. Now, let's fit it now with the title before we start putting in scriptures. Now listen. Here we are in the heavenly court room of Abba Yahuwah with this powerful message started for you and me. Noah caused. Ham's son, Cana, Africa slave to others. Let's do some scattery about black and white superiority. Now, when you want to get things done in the land, in the family, in the city, in wherever community, and okay, some okay, like something, okay, should I be ready there first? Or should I okay, let me read there first, okay. When you are in search of something and you want to fix something that is broken in the family, you, you are in search of that very particular valuable thing that is broken of the family. When you are in search of it, are you going to be doing it, you know, on your sleepy bed? 
No, you're going to be scattered. You, go, you will scatter everywhere. That is when you lost something. Okay, now let me point it direct to you. When you lost something that is so precious unto you, that is so valuable, that is part of you, that makes us of life for you, and you just you misplace it or you lose it or you lost it, how are you going to go about it in search of it? How are you going to be doing that? I put that to you. So now let's read scripture. If you have ever been in this situation of losing something that is so important unto you, how do you go about it? How do you search for it? How? Now Luke chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. Now listen. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, do I not light a candle and sweep the, the house and seek diligently till she found it? Are you going to be going like this? Nine. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I have had, which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in heaven. Okay, there is joy in the presence of the angels of Yahuwah over one sinner that repents. Okay, now, you see how the woman got it done. You see how the woman found her missing coin. And that is how a true believer should have been found it, digging into what is still missing. What is he holding Yahushua back? Why is Yahushua not still here? Or why is things still like this? Or why is things still like that? Because 2019, 400 years slavery prophecy was completed. Now, we are counting about five years on top. I keep wondering. I'm just like a rolling lion running here and running there. What is still left? Where is Jesus still hiding? Where is all these devils still hiding? Where is this pollution still coming from? Why is still things like this? Why are things still like this? Why deliverance is still not yet given? What is still going on? That is what I'm doing. Re Revelation 13 said, Let him that have wisdom calculate where the demon is still hiding. And I found out this one. Not just on Africa, also in the land of Africa. Now let me quickly put in this. If Cana is a black guy, and it's, uh, it's the land of Africa. So what is that telling you? What is that saying? That Messiah is a black guy? Or the promised land is, a, is Africa? <laughs> we'll be doing that next week. So what about Jerusalem? Who gave it, who gave it another name? Excuse me, not Jerusalem. Why, why, what, 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 what about the Middle East? Who gave it another name? And what is the meaning of Africa also? Hey, my father, this one is heavy. Africa. In Latin, it said, uh, Latin says, um, uh, Sonny Fetter. That is, European names you this name. This is not the name. I Messiah call us or call the land. I will tell you now the name of the land. Very wonderful. But European, the Romans gave you this name, Africa. So, Africa is a, a word that is com composed together Latin and Greek. So, when you take Africa to Greek, it simply means um, sunny fighter. But when you now take it to Greek, what does it mean? Spirit of horror. Spirit of horror. You are horror. You are horrible. That is the name they put on you. This is the sign they put on you, the seed they put on you. We'll talk, we will talk about briefly the superiority because there is a cause. Now, let's go back to the title. That is what you've been called. And the orchard name of Africa, what is it being called? All right, now let's keep digging into it. The original, or yeah, the original name of what they call today Africa, Al-Kabbalan. Al-Kabbalan. So what is the meaning of Al-Kabbalan? Simply mean the Garden of Eden. I want to cry. The Garden of Eden, Al-Kabbalan. But then I came to change it and gave us 
the spirit of awe, the superiority. The Europeans gave us the spirit of awe. And be uh, super, uh, or the Romans make it super popular. Now this is your given name. This is your given name. Africa, spirit of horror. The spirit of horror. Meanwhile, your original name is Akabalan, meaning the garden of Eden, the mother of all living. Anyways, let's, let's, okay. Now, I want to do prophecy. I only have 30 minutes to leave here. I want to do prophecy. Because this is still in the making. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verses 3. Blessed is he that have read, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So there is still prophecy we ought not to be, or we ought not to ignore it. There is still very vital, important prophecy we still need to look into. Since Yahushua said his second coming, returning back, is going to be, should we read that in order for us to know? Okay, prophecy. Okay, let, let's quickly read that. Because that is the reason why. This is why we are here. Luke chapter 17, uh, 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. That they did drink, that they did eat, they drink, they married wives, and were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drink, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot, Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day where the Son of Man is revealed. So that was the question I first of all asked every one of us. What time are we now, spiritual, uh, spiritually speaking? We are in these two days. Whereby a divine judgment went forth into the earth. Like the days of Noah, it was the judgment of the entire world. And like, like the days of Lord, it was a country by country judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah, two countries blend together, destroyed, deleted out of this planet. The map of the earth. Sodom and Gomorrah exist no more. But in the days of Noah, it was the entire world. Only eight people saved. And that is the sign. And this is the era, the time we are now, spiritually speaking. And Yahushua said, when it's going to come, everything that transpired in the days of Noah is surfacing again. Why? Because a complete deliverance is not yet, is not yet given. Because there is a, a, another job King Yahushua needs to carry out. The one he did before was for the priestly, a prophecy. The high priest prophecy, the high priest, the eternal high priest, he has so done that. Now the kingly prophecy is where we is going to be utterly, completely redeemed, like kind of our spirit is already being saved, but our body will be delivered utterly where Yahushua sits as a king. You see this cause, Noah releases, because he's a righteous man, only Yahushua won't do this. So this is why I hate Christianity. When they are trying to bring worst and bring damage to our people and said, Poor could Jesus destroy his head for them not to, you know, look into what was before them. What, what situation are they now? Because what was before you put you in this situation you are now? Like what was before you in the days of Adam? That, that is another powerful thing that we are before you. But you are still dying today. You are still suffering today. A woman is still going through child uh, birth pain. It is prophecy. It is a cause. You are still dying. You are still telling the ground. It is a cause. And the ground is caused. 
And this is where you put yourself, and this is where you put your leg. This Yahushua will f- this one Yahushua, this is where Yahushua is going to begin his kingly throne in, in making, reversing all these causes from our flesh. Until then, it can't, and the testimony is everywhere. All right now, so the prophecy, these are the prophecy we, still need, we are still looking into. Genesis 3, verses 17 through 19, Abayawa cost the land. And the land has not yet been redeemed. Luke chapter 15, verses 8, I read that already. Now, Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 to 21, I think I will be reading this because Noah released a cause among the black people. Noah led a cause. And that cause is honored by Abayahua. Not that Abba Yahweh wants us to suffer, and that was why he consummated that th- uh, the cause, because Noah releases it already, and Abba Yahweh cannot deny that. That is the authority also gave to anyone that is also in, in Yahushua. He said, whatever we declare, it comes to pass. Now let's read Proverbs. Proverbs have the, the full, okay, uh, the Proverbs, you know, break it down very well. Proverbs chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He said your belly is going to be overflowing from whatever you use your mouth to say. Whatever, whatever that comes out of your mouth, whatever, whatever you declare, your belly is going to be filled. It is it's going to cover your, totality, your entire intestine. And from there, your physical world will be giving birth to what you carry in your belly. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Did you get that? So whatever your mouth, your belly carries, your mouth carries, okay, then your lips is going to be, you know, releases it upon your life. 21. Death and death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Africa is eating the fruit of the of, of the death of the cause Noah releases from his mouth or from his tongue. He releases it. I don't think I will be digging into what transpired, why he laid that cause. Maybe I will be just be touching on briefly, but I'm after the cause because there is a cause we need to look into. And when we begin to look into it, that is how Yahushua will undo. That is how Yahushua is going to be delivering you, cleansing you personally. Work out your own salvation. Your own salvation. In tremble and fear. So when you begin to look into what was before you, that is, that is the only way you, you will be able to talk about it before him. And say, lose me from this band. Deliver me from this cause because it is free. Now we have read this uh, Proverbs already. Now where's the other part? Okay, now let's go to um, look at uh, Genesis now twenty uh, Genesis nine verses twenty one through twenty seven. Yeah, there is a cause. There is a problem. That is why I first of all put out that question that when you lost something so important, we lost our honor, we lost our dignity, we lost our home, we lost our land, we lost our garment of glory. So we are in search of it. Now that we are in search of what we lost, very, very important, the source of living. Are we going to be doing it dilig- Are we going to be doing it diligently or are you going to be rationalizing it? Or are you going to be taking it as microwave whatever? Whatever story anybody just cook for you, you ring one. No, you will not be doing it diligently to know how this affects your spiritual life, affect your glory. That is the only way you can find it. And when we find this, angels gonna throw party in heaven. Eh? Gonna be celebrating before by Yahuwah. Now Genesis chapter nine verses twenty one. And he drank, okay, Noah, okay, 20. And Noah began to be an husband boundary. Husband, okay, husband man, excuse me. And Noah began to be an husband 
ma, and he planted a vineyard, that is a farm, okay, and he drunk, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. This is a figure of speech, okay, and her, the father of Cana, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. This is why I hate Christianity. They will begin to say, when your pastor falls into mess, you don't need to gossip. Turn the fire you hear. What's my thing? What does that, that have to do with this event that took place here? What does that have to do? I beg. I don't really have enough, enough time you know, to look into your madness. Because each time I come to this, a thing like this, it boils my mind. It turns my stomach. And Shem and Japheth, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their face were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. 24. And Noah awoke from his wife, knew what his younger son had done unto him. Now, this younger son here, this is a little, uh, I don't know whether it's trans, uh, error of translation because the one that saw that nakedness is the second born of Noah. It's not the younger son. Yafet is the younger son and the last born. But Ham, the father of Africa, is the uh, second son, and he was the one who saw the nakedness. So I quickly want to clear this out of the way. That was error of translation. But if we also go to Genesis chapter 10, verse 6, we will see Kena is the younger son of Ham. Kena was the last born of Ham. But Kena was not the one who saw this nakedness, but it was his father Ham. Okay. But it's ESA younger son, but actually it is maybe he was trying to say his second son. This is the error of translation somehow. Uh, 24. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. 25 now. And he said, Cost be Cana, a servant of servants, that is a slave of all. Shall he be unto his brethren? <laughs> 26. And he said, Blessed be the Adana, blessed be the Yahuwah Elohim of Sham, and Kena shall be his servant. And okay, Yahuwah shall enlarge Yafet, and he shall dwell in the tent of Sham. And Kena is going to be their slave. Kena is not going to be serving the white, it's also going to be serving the black. Though everyone here we are black people. Noah was Abino. Okay? Abino, excuse me. And we call it Abino. Uh, Abino. Okay? Gave birth to three dark men. Okay? But from, from Yafet, the younger son, Genesis chapter 10 was the word of Gentiles came to be. So from Ham and then. Um, uh, Shem, we're the, uh, uh, the, 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 the black, the world of, okay, let me say Africa. Africa. So this was how this world was divided into two. The first born and the second born occupied Africa. Why the last born is said from Japheth, there comes the Gentiles. Who are what is Gentiles? Gentiles simply mean pagan. I don't worship people, people that serve devils, people that doesn't have covenant with Yahuwah. But not so with Sham, because from Sham there comes Yahushua, Messiah. And Kena should also be happy from that glory, but Kena is cursed, which is her, the father of Africa. Not just the father of Africa, K. Ham is not only the father of Africa, also Shah. Because if the land of Kenya is the promised land, and Kenya is Africa, therefore the land, they rename it Middle East, just to keep Heidi 
the truth from you. Now, okay, what's this? I'm coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we see the cause. Genesis 6, verses 7 through 9. Why the, re the reason why this cause is established, it is because Noah was found righteous. Whatever he said about you was honor he honors it. As soon as he releases that cause, uh, there comes the suffering of Africa. Have you ever seen the Europeans will not travel to Africa to seek asylum? When we go to them, they are boss. When they come to us, they are our boss. When we go to them, they are boss. And when they also come to our land, they are boss. In either way, it is the cause of Noah. But we, the black people, we fled, we, we, we fled from our country into their land to seek asylum. Regardless who you are, you must do it properly. I don't think any black... Uh, okay, okay. Because I, did, I didn't really dig into that part. But I will do that perfectly next week, Shabbat. Because we're going to be talking about the land. You are your land and your land is you. You are Africa. We, will talk, we are talking about Africa today. Next week we will talk about Africa, which is your land. That is being occupied because of course. You are in your land, but white people still rule over you. Your Messiah was black, but white people turn it to white. All this pagan you see today, pagan is going on. It started from, from the Europeans, from them. They brought it to you. And I took away your own spirituality and give you now their own spirituality. And this is how you become servant, a slave of both the choosy and both, you are a slave to black people person like you and you are also a slave to a white Japhet, the Gentiles. Now how are you a slave now to black people like yourself? Of course this one is easy to answer. Check it from your politician. From your politicians, I'm referring to Nigeria now, from your pastors, they are rubbing heavily from you. From your traditional rulers, they are looting. Your own resources in collaboration with Yafet, the Europeans. They are taking away your resources. You are a slave on that day. You are a slave to your black, uh, black people. You are also a slave to a white man. Why? Because of the causes of Noah. It is real. This is what we should have been looking into in order for we to know what to talk about and what to pray about, how to address this matter. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It did not say the people of the devil, but my own people. Now, how do a black man eventually not turn to white? Because the effect was also a black girl. The book of Enoch have the answer. The inner book have the answer. Now who is dwelling in the land of Shem? The white people, the Afet, the Caucasian, the Ashkenazi, the synagogue of Satan, they occupy your land. You see, both the Aborigi, the one, because, okay, let me call the scriptures. I think I'm only going to be talking because this message is really big. But if I have to read every details, mm, there is no room at all. Joshua chapter 6. Okay, yes, I, I need to do this. Now, because you see Genesis chapter 6, verses 7 through 9, make it so clear that uh, Noah was a righteous man. Fear for by a one honors this cause. Now, Joshua chapter 6, verses 17 and verses 29, remember a prophet. A righteous man before Yehovah, Joshua, led a cause on Jericho. He said Jericho land would be a cause. Jericho was cursed and the people, the land was also cursed. Not only the people, but the land also was cursed. Even though the people was being chased out, but the land remained cursed and wherever they fled to, they were still cursed. Because it is a prophet and a righteous man of Yehovah that releases that cause on them. 
Now, how was Jericho be loosed from this cause? I should have been reading this. If I'm not reading every other part. Okay, let me quickly read this. I want to give you a clarity or a picture, a very clear picture of what Noah did, how Yahushua is going to reverse it in his second coming. Uh, Joshua, he will be reversing it in his second coming, but we are preparing the way for him to cleanse us because we are the one, the trap of Yehuda. We are the one to receive him. We are the one to welcome him. We will, we will, this cause cannot be a garment on us, and he will not come to meet us with this cause. He will remove. That is why all this message is coming out. The trap of Yehuda alone will be delivered. So that is the nature of this segment. Joshua chapter 6 verse 17. Let's quickly read it now. Every other 12 tribes will go through tribulation and they will be cleansed in the face of affliction. And some is going to die. But in the first resurrection, they are coming right back. Joshua chapter 6 verse 17. And the city shall be accursed. Even, even it and all are therein. Not only the land, but the people. To Yahuwah, only... Uh, uh, Re Rahab, the high lord, shall live. She and all she and all that are with her in the house, because she had the messengers that we are sent. He said the city, not just only this, everything there is it's a cost. It's a, it's a, it's a cost. It's a cost. Now listen, twenty six now. And Joshua adjourned them that at that time. Okay, and Joshua adjourned, adjourned them at that time. Saying, Cursed be the man before Yahuwah that rise up and build this city, Jericho. Did you get that? It said, Any man that tried to build Jericho again, you will be cursed. You are cursed. Jericho shall, he shall, see the cause now. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and his youngest son. Shall sure, he set up the gates of it? And by your one, he consummated it. Now, who reversed this course? Jericho is cursed, and the people of Jericho is cursed. So who reversed this course? How did this course indeed work in the life of the land Jericho and the people of Jericho? Second Kings chapter 2, verses 18 or so through 22. Or rather, 19 or 18, yes. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? 19. And the mayor of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Adonai said, is not, and the ground barren. You can see Jericho, you can see Africa. It's a very wonderful land from where Messiah comes, but there is barrenness in the land. The people is in the... Uh, 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 oh, my Abba. I only have seven minutes to go. Let me see quickly, quick. 20. And he said, break me. Okay, this is how I reverse it. And he said, break me a new uh, bow and put salt therein, and they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the uh, spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith Yahuwah, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from henceforth any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this, unto these days, according to the saying. Of Elijah, which he spoke. This is how he reverse it. And this was why Yahushua says, Second Corinthians 5 70, if my be in Yahushua is a new creature, all things will be passed away. Don't rationalize it and say you are born again without you addressing it. The cause will still, and this cause, they are all demons, they are all devils. We will do that next week. To let you know the devils you are sleeping with. You see yourself now, Africa, Mediterranean Sea. How many of your blood shed over there? Because you are trying to fled away from your own country. Because it's barry. Not it's work. Even though Africa have the entire resources that sustain the entire world. 
that evil caught the Jaffa, the Europeans, you know, attention that made them, you know, flood into our land and begin to steal our resources for their own betterment. But to you, you don't benefit not. He became barren unto you. How can you, you the prince, walking with a barefoot? Jaffa the servant is not riding on the horse your own resources. Your own glory. Did you see how they beautify their land, the Europeans? Did you see how their system works? Did you see how their land is so wonderful and so glorious? Have you seen Africa? Africa is a like kind of bottomless pit. It smells. It's so filthy. Meanwhile, you have the resources to make your own land beautiful, like the Europeans would be doing that next week. But it's a cause. That's what we are saying. Yahshua is about to come. The trap of Yehuda needs to walk up wherever you are and talk to him concerning this cause. It's real for you to receive your deliverance inside your house personally. Personally, you need to be set free and your land needs to be redeemed. Joseph was a king, or rather, excuse me, second in command in the land of Egypt, Mizraim, which is the son of Ham. And Joseph became, you know, second in command in another man's land. And we are going back again also to the era of Joseph. The time of famine is about to come. Africa is, is going to be so, so blessed by King Yahushua. In fact, it's blessed. Just that looters are not letting us to benefit from the resources from our own land. Look at China. China, the Japheth, went into Africa, especially in Nigeria. China have a land that called China's land, China city. Only China occupied that place in Nigeria. And the same China also have a, 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 a shopping mall in our own land. But black people is not allowed. The Nigerians is not allowed to go into that shopping mall to do shopping. They say it's only for China in our own land again. China have their own land in our own land. Can you not go to China and have your own land? You will be killed. It's a cause. That is what we are saying. We will do that next week. You as an African, you are on that cause. I said you begin to talk to Abayawa and repent genuinely from your sin and talk to Abayawa to deliver you from this. You are on that cause. That's what we are saying. By a genuine and a righteous man of Yahuwah. I'm not talking about, I don't think I'll be talking about what transpired. I read Second King already. Now, Rehuben, okay, now Genesis chapter 9, verses 21 again through 27. What took place over the What was the nakedness? It is says perversion after the flood. The nakedness of Noah, it is simply his wife. Ham did that wickedness to his own mother. And that was why Cana were being cursed. It is the fruit that came from that unholy, that abominable art. How can, because I also you naked, you will be cursing my own child? He said he knew what happened. Who was drunk over there was Noah's wife. Leviticus 18 verses 1 through 8. You can read that in your quiet time. He said these are the things of Cana. Cana were sleeping with their mother. And Yahshua said, this is the sign. Lot, daughters, also slept with their fathers, two of them. And one land, Moab or Amor, is also in Africa. The land given unto us. We'll be talk doing this next week. From where all this evil spirit resident. Demons are sent from the pit. Intermarrying with human beings, it is the era we are, Genesis 6, fallen angels. You need to see how VF, how they are creating people in the lab. Do you know how it's being done? Stop rationalizing the issue. You are in a serious mess. What about the rainbow? The covenant of rainbow. Who is also using it today? Homosexuality. LGBT community. In the days of Noah. So what took place over there was says perversion. 
Leviticus 18, verses 1 through 8, you're going to see it over there. You should, it said the, the nakedness of your father is his wife. Rehobe also did that. Uh, the Testament of Rehobe, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. You can also read if you have it. No, excuse me, chapter 33. Excuse me, chapter 1, verses 33 through 41. He also slept with his father's, he saw his father's nakedness. Meanwhile, he slept with his father's wife. To drunkenness. Numbers chapter 33, verses 51 through 56. This is the cause. We are done because I'm about to be shut down. We will proceed next week, Shabbat. Maybe we'll be doing more. Thank you, Abba. I bless you for the case or the hiding place of Jesus is already being exposed. All this wicked spirit, the hiding place is being exposed. Thank you for your people who will be liberated and being delivered. Thank you, Father, for ruling away this stone from us, stone of reproach, for setting us free from the slave within and from the slave outside us. Thank you for blessing our out and for blessing our in, for delivering us from the slave outside and for also delivering us from the slave inside. Love you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Abba.